On August 13, 1926, Fidel Castro was born into a wealthy family in Baran, a small town in eastern Cuba. His father, a prosperous sugar plantation owner, ensured that young Fidel was provided with the best educational opportunities, sending him to study at prestigious Jesuit boarding schools. Here, Castro's intellectual prowess began to unfold, and he developed a keen sense of Cuban nationalism and anti-imperialist sentiments. These formative years were instrumental in shaping the political ideology of the young Castro. As he grew older, Castro's thirst for knowledge and his passion for justice led him to pursue a degree in law at the University of Havana. It was here that Castro's political journey began. He found himself drawn to the revolutionary ideas that were circulating among his peers, ideas that challenged the status quo and called for a new socio-political order. A young Castro, stirred by nationalist sentiments and anti-imperialism, was set on a path that would forever change the course of Cuba's history. Castro's political consciousness grew during his university years as he witnessed social injustices and political corruption. This period was a crucible for his ideological formation. Castro, a law student at the University of Havana, became increasingly involved in politics. He aligned himself with socialist ideologies, seeing them as a means to combat the deep-seated inequality he saw around him. His opposition to the government of Fulgencio Batista, a dictator who had seized power in a military coup, became a defining aspect of his political identity. Castro's fervor culminated in a failed attack on the Moncada barracks in 1953, an event that marked a significant escalation in his revolutionary activities. The attack was a disaster, leading to his arrest and imprisonment. But far from breaking him, this experience only hardened Castro's resolve. These experiences only fueled Castro's resolve, turning him from a law student into a revolutionary. Emerging from prison in 1955, Castro was more determined than ever to overthrow Batista's government. He had a vision for a Cuba free from corruption and inequality, and he was willing to do whatever it took to make that vision a reality. In Mexico, he assembled a group of revolutionaries, known as the 26th of July movement, named after the date of his failed attack on the Moncada barracks two years prior. This group was the backbone of Castro's resistance against Batista's regime. They were not a conventional army, but a band of guerrilla fighters, skilled in the art of ambush and hit-and-run tactics. It was during this time that Castro met Argentine revolutionary Ernesto Che Guevara. Guevara would become one of Castro's closest allies and a key figure in the Cuban Revolution. Together, they began to plan their return to Cuba and the downfall of Batista. Castro's guerrilla warfare tactics proved to be incredibly effective. His forces would strike swiftly, then melt back into the mountains and jungles, evading Batista's troops. These tactics not only frustrated Batista's forces, but also garnered Castro significant attention and popularity among the Cuban people. They saw in him a leader willing to fight for their rights and freedoms. By 1958, the tide had begun to turn in Castro's favor. Batista's government was crumbling under the weight of its own corruption and the relentless pressure from Castro's forces. On New Year's Day in 1959, Batista fled Cuba, and Castro's revolutionaries marched into Havana victorious. It was a momentous day, marking the end of a brutal dictatorship and the beginning of Castro's rule. He would go on to lead Cuba for more than five decades, transforming the country in ways that still resonate today. With an army of guerrilla fighters and widespread public support, Castro seized power, marking the beginning of a new era for Cuba. The journey to this point had been long and fraught with challenges, but Castro had achieved what he set out to do. He had overthrown Batista and was now in a position to reshape Cuba in his image. Castro's reign, spanning nearly five decades, left an indelible mark on Cuba and the world at large. His policies, a blend of socialism and nationalism, aimed to eradicate illiteracy, poverty, and racial inequality in Cuba. Yet they also stirred controversy, with critics pointing to human rights abuses, economic inefficiencies, and political repression. Defying the United States, Castro survived numerous assassination attempts and an economic embargo that lasted over half a century. His defiance became a symbol of resistance against Western imperialism, inspiring many revolutionaries worldwide. On the international stage, Castro played a significant role in Cold War politics, aligning with the Soviet Union and supporting anti-imperialist insurgencies. His influence extended well beyond Cuba's shores, affecting global geopolitics and the ideology of revolution. Whether loved or loathed, there's no denying that Fidel Castro, the charismatic and contentious leader, shaped Cuba's destiny and left a lasting impact on the world stage.